Good afternoon. <clears throat> oh, sorry. Start that one again, shall we? Good afternoon and welcome to another episode of A Couple With. Just me this week. And I'm here to discuss everything from mental health and mindset and everything in between. I don't know what to say. You know what? I'm going to be honest. I don't know what to say. I had recorded something and then I got annoyed with it and then I deleted it because apparently I'm a little bit all over the place today. I have been <laughs> experiencing quite a lot just lately and I've not known how to express it, what to say about it, what to do about it, what to do next. <gasps> and here goes. <laughs> I have not known how to manage everything that I am dealing with at the moment but it seems to be having a positive effect as in the sense of I'm learning more about myself I'm dealing with past problems I'm also finishing off my uni and everything's a bit weird 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 I don't know is my new favorite saying because I don't know Rather than just saying, it is now, I don't know. I sound like my daughter when I've asked her why she'd done something wrong. I don't know. I don't know. And I don't. I don't. Go back to my, you can go and look at my vlog. And I seriously, I don't know. I don't know. And I, I said I'd be honest in this podcast. And I'm going to be honest on this podcast. Because this is what's important. I feel like my mental health has got better but in that I'm lost in confusion because I'm like my my brain is like oh, I don't know what to do about this and I can't be the only mofo with this. I absolutely adore doing my podcasts with people and talking to people but I have been stumped just lately because I'm going through something I don't know, maybe a growth mind spurt. Can you do a growth spurt for your mind? Maybe. I'll start sprouting a flower. Seriously, this is the kind of stuff you're going to have to deal with for the next at least half an hour. But if you switch off, I completely understand. I'm going to probably ramble. If you agree, yay, carry on listening. If you don't, well, here we go. There's always the off button and I completely understand. So, my lovely, lovely, lovely listeners, you ever got into that point where you feel like you're doing so much but nothing at all? I hear you cry, yes! And that's exactly how it's going. Last year I did loads. I did loads. I went to TED Talks, I met people, I tried new things, I did holidays on my own, well, place on my own. I went to psychology things, I, you know, I did all this experience and all this growing and all this trying new stuff. And this year I feel like even though I personally grown more, like personal growth has grown more, this year than it did last year. I kind of feel a bit deflated on the fact that I haven't done a lot. But I I know the personal growth need to do it. So this is the point I'm getting at. It's like if you are doing the same thing, please don't get upset that you're not doing new stuff like you know. I'm not saying yes to more things. Well maybe you said yes to too many things and now you need to say no. Which is probably the case for me. Mental health is a bugger. Because we all have it. It's all different. What works for one doesn't necessarily work for another. And if you try loads of new things for one person that can make them grow, and try loads of new things for one person can only have their issues. Guess which one I was. Dun dun dun! 
I was a letter. And uh, it meant that I've had to, what I've done this year has had to be facing up to a lot of things which I'm still facing. The year's not up yet people, we're not even halfway through. Obviously starting with the no drinking, still not had a drink, still not had one alcoholic drink. I have tried a non-alcoholic beer, not bad, not bad. Like, yeah, it's drinkable. It'd be, it gives me something else to drink when I go out rather than just Diet Coke. Because I don't know about you, but once you start adding a, like Diet Cokes and people are like, oh, I'll get you a Diet Coke, I'll get you a Diet Coke. And you're like, oh my God, I can't drink any more Diet fucking Coke. So, options. Um, worked through a few issues from my past. Um, I feel like I want to talk about it, but I'm not, I don't know. Oh fuck it! Let's just talk about it, shall we? Let Let's just pull the elephant from the like from. Let's talk about the elephant in the middle of the room. You don't know it's an elephant in the middle of the room, but I know it's an elephant in the middle of the room because I know what I'm going on about, and I always said that I'd tell the truth. So basically, one of the biggest things from my past that has always stuck with me is <sighs> fuck it. Duck, this is kind of vulnerable shit here. I don't know who my biological dad is. Uh, there's a fair guess. But I've never known which one is truly that person. But I didn't find out till after they were both dead. <laughs> yeah. That that that's that's always nice yeah if you you can't see me but i've got terrifically big thumbs up to that situation and everybody knew but me and it was shouted at me in the middle of an argument with my stepdad just before he attacked me and i got him arrested yes my life could literally be eastenders <sighs> but when I was 15 I had a go at him and told him I was so angry at him really angry and like where have you been what have you been doing Dave's been there this is when I used to still be rel relatively close to my stepdad and um you know he's done everything and blah 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 um and he had showed so much respect for her and even though probably many people might not think she deserved it, including myself, he still showed a love and respect and I admire that about him now that I know the truth. Is that he went, there's a lot of things you don't know, you need to speak to your mum, you need to speak to your mum, you need to speak to your mum. I can't talk to you about this, you need to speak to your mum. And I... I only realised after that he was respecting my mum's wishes and not saying anything. And I was so angry at the time that I was like, what the fuck are you on about? Just, why haven't you been there? And my thing is, why, who was answering, why wouldn't you, why wouldn't you been there? Why haven't you been there? Why haven't you been a dad? Why haven't you done this and you? And I put it all into the fact that he was an alcoholic. Yes, literally, I can, I could literally write a series of a drama. He was an alcoholic. And when I saw him, he, um, he, he had got himself cleaned up and I give him credit for that because he'd, he'd put himself back on straight and narrow, got himself cleaned up but sadly um, the alcohol had done too much damage to him and it shortened his life massively so much so that he died. Um, I think it was the uh, 2003 after my daughter was born. Yeah, no, 2003, 2004, a couple of years after my daughter was born. And I remember everything. I remember my mum calling me up saying, your dad's dead. And I was like, my stepdad, why? What the fuck happened? Like panicking. And then she's like, no, 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 no. Like, your dad. I was like, 
Okay, why are you calling me up about him? <laughs> I don't care. I did. But I don't care. Um, and then there was so much stuff in between where he tried to contact me. I wasn't interested. He tried to go through my sister. wasn't interested. After she'd found out what I'd done, my mother found out what I did like about having to go at him. She never said anything. And I was just like, and then a couple of years later when everything came out, I was like, you got to be shitting me. You knew exactly what I did and you didn't tell me the truth. And I was so angry. But I was so angry because he deserved an apology from me. He deserved, even though anybody in their right fucking mind would go, you were 15, you were angry, you didn't know. Like, as far as you're concerned, this person who created you just didn't bother. And, like, yeah. <laughs> I, I, in that instance, I would. And because people had lied to me and hid stuff from me, like, of course, like, you were all within your rights. This is advice to any parent. Do your best to tell the truth. But if they, if they force your hand, tell them. If they force your hand, tell them. Like, there is always going to be stuff that your kids might not necessarily need to know. Like, I don't need to know all the details that happen between my parents. Like, my biological ones. But I don't need to know all that. I will never know that and I don't want to know that. But the decent thing she could have told me when I had a go at him was, you know, was the, the reason why he said speak to me is because I asked him to keep it quiet that he might not be your dad. Oh, and also I told him to stay away. Like, <laughs> seriously, in my life. But I don't, f I've, I've, since the moment I found out everything and I processed it all, I wanted to find where he was and apologise. Like, to the best of him I could. <laughs> Um, and realised that would mean facing and accepting everything and it's only been I'm going to fast forward your 16 years so it was 2003 I'm going to fast forward your 16 years to last week and I went to go see my grandparents I like my, uh, okay my also say my grandparents died a few years ago but I go to visit where they are because it feels like home I used to spend every holiday with my grandparents when I was up to the age of 11 I spent more time with my grandparents than I did my parents so that little village in the middle of nowhere feels like home to me and after my granddad died I spent a lot of time with my nana it, so it still feels like home to me and um, I always say that's where my ashes are going to be scattered um, and then something inside of me said no it's time to find and I was before I was like oh I'd try and find an excuse or I don't have enough time or I just knew I wasn't ready and that day I was ready so what I did was I googled where I needed to be and I found him. I <laughs> finding a gravestone in a graveyard is you would think be the hardest thing in the world. Turns out it's not. I knew so I felt like something was guiding my hand. And I found him in two minutes. Two minutes. This is the thing that I've been holding off for sixteen years. I found him in two minutes. In a graveyard, people. And I sat and I wept. And I talked to him for a good 20 minutes. But when I finally finished, my shoulders dropped. 
I've been carrying that, that weight with me for so long. Even though it wasn't mine to bear, I thought because it was on me, because I was the centre of this, this secret, it was on me to speak about it and, and sort it out. I took the responsibility. I wanted to take that responsibility. That was my responsibility. No child asks to be here. But I was never raised in a loved house. I was never raised... My grandparents, that's different. They loved me, but... That's why when my daughter asked me questions or my son asked me questions, there are always things that they don't need to know. Like, the ins and outs of, rel of your relationship with your partner. There is or your ins and outs of every little detail that went on in your past. But if they force your hand in the way I did, you have to tell them. You have to be honest. I carried that for so long, feeling it was my responsibility to, to, to tell him I was sorry because even in that moment of looking my mother in the eye and telling her exactly what I did, she didn't say anything. If it comes to that point, please, please, I beg of you, tell them the truth. Or at least enough truth that they don't carry it with them. You don't need to tell them every detail. But don't let them carry it with them for 16 fucking years thinking it's their fault and they need to say sorry. They, it's, it's horrid. But now, now, I'm happy. I found him. I spoke to him. I apologise not just for me but for my mother. I know that's not for me to say so. It's not for me to apologise to her but I believe he deserved that. I believe he did. Everybody knew the truth but me. Everybody allowed me to sit there and have a go at him. And for me to, like, okay, to be fair, nobody knew I was going to have a go here. But after I told people, every single one of them didn't tell me the truth. I didn't need to know what had gone on. But just for them to say the reason why he kept it quiet was because he wasn't sure he was your father would have been enough. Would have been enough for me to correct that mistake while he was alive. That's that I felt like that was taken from me. Don't take an opportunity away from your kids that you can sort out. And it's really hard to talk about this sort of stuff. It really is. Because there's always going to be some stuff that you're going to have to keep away from your kids. Because that's your business. There's no need for them to know that. And I don't need, I didn't need to know any of that. But. I felt like I finally got to. Maybe I idolised the idea that. If he'd been around, then maybe there would have been some sort of happiness. There would have been somewhere to... I mean, my grandparents did everything they could be. They didn't know the full truth. Me and my granddad did. But me and my siblings, we, we, we didn't grow up like most people did. And we're not the closest now because because of the way we grew up. But all three of them knew 
where they came from. And I never did. And knowing that you were a result of either an alcoholic or your best mum's best friend's husband is a really shitty way and have it screamed at you is a really shitty way to find out the truth. Don't have it screamed at them. Don't. Don't. Maybe I'm bearing my soul a bit much here. But there's a lot I've learned from it. And if anything, this is what I'm going to leave you with. These are the lessons I've learned from it. Taking responsibility is the best thing you can do, even though it caused me great pain. Taking responsibility for a situation that you never caused to be able to fix it gives you the greatest power in the world. I would never ask to be here. No child ever asked to be here. But once I realised the mistake that other people have made about me, for me, the only way I could change that is for me to correct it. I took responsibility for myself, for my emotions, for my mother, and I did something. And now I will visit him every chance I get. My other one is, once you finally face whatever it is you've been hiding from, because I know I need a lot of excuses not to go. I've had a car for two years. I could have used the car. I go to like, my hometown all the time. I could have gone, but when you're ready to face it, you will not just feel it in your mind, you will feel it in your body. Wherever you have been holding it, the weight will release. For me, it was my shoulders. I felt like I'd been bearing that weight for a long time. And I dropped it. As soon as I finished what I had to say to him, my whole shoulder, literally, I, I could have literally just fallen forward. I was sat on the floor and my whole body crunched. So once you finally do it, wherever you've been holding it in your body, it will go. And that's when you know you've dealt with it. I get upset now because I'm happy. These are no longer tears. You've changed the emotional attachment. Once you've done something and took responsibility, changed it and faced it, you change the emotion attached to it. You change the emotion. You change how you see it, how you view it. I now have a place to go to, to lay some respect for somebody that changed all too all too late but still held respect for somebody who he made a promise to 15 years beforehand because he didn't feel it was his place kind of holds up to my granddad's thing and how much I love my granddad for saying stick to your word he could have dubbed my mum in but he didn't feel it was my his place. Gotta respect that. Different perspective every time. So yeah, you've got. Let me just gather myself again, cause like yeah, that one was a yeah. Take responsibility. Take responsibility. Once you deal with it and face it. Wherever you've been holding in your body, will dis it, it will drop. And it will change the emotion attached to it. I was surprised by the last one. I was surprised. Because as soon as I found his grave, I was happy. And afterwards, I was even happier. That was surprising to me, really surprising, but good. Like I'm not saying it was a bad surprise, it was a good surprising. But it was a surprising nonetheless. 
So they are my three things from this. And I don't know how much to bear on this because I am very honest and open about certain stuff that I deal with. I'm very open about stuff because I want I want to be able to help other people. And if I've gone through this kind of messed up situation, I know I'm not the only child that's found out they were born to a messed up situation. You have no idea how many stories these are close. I mean, I've spoken to so many people and kids that have gone through similar stuff or are going to go through similar stuff. Um, it's scary to think it because a child never asked to be on this earth. The chances of them being them or you being you are so minute, it's unreal. I don't want to say that they're God's gift because you know what, sometimes I want to throttle my two. But do your best by them. Do your best by your children. Like, don't let them be a shit. Don't let them get away with stuff. But by all means, if they do something that forces your hand, don't let them have to carry that for the rest of them life, for the rest of however long you want to be. Don't let them carry that weight. Know that they are. Let them know that they are loved and. If they're struggling to get through stuff that they are not alone. Half of the stuff that I do is because when I was growing up, I never had this crap. I never had the talk of mental health. I never had the talk of what the fuck's going on. I never had the talk of not every family is this messed up. And also that there are families that are way more messed up than you. So you should be grateful for the good bits that you do have. I couldn't tell the difference. Now, I don't know how much my siblings will agree to me talking about this sort of stuff. But this is my story. They have their own. They have their own perspective. And even though all of us went through similar stuff or whatever. I can't speak for my brothers. But my sister went through similar stuff with me. Because my brothers are my stepbrothers. But. It's. It's been a, whew. I wouldn't say it got me closure. Because I think closure is like, oh, it's the end of something. I think it's a change. And it made me feel better inside to have that change. It, it put something to rest for me. So that now, even if I do have him wrong, all I know is that I respect the person that he tried to be. And I could have followed that up and I really, do you know what I thought then? My, br my first thought was it's better than my mother ever did. But I'm still dealing with stuff. I'm still dealing with the... And the more I look at myself, the more I get to know myself, the more I get to realise what's been stuck in me and I've, I've ignored and... I'm growing through and I'm learning and I'm facing every day. The more I get to know the person I want to become. And that will be the same for you. The more you work on yourself, the more you get to know the person you want to become. And the more you become the person that you want to become. So yeah. If I've not horrified you with my story, and yes, I know, I really could, really could be an EastEnders episode. That gives me strength, right? Responsibility. I'm smiling now. I don't know if you can hear it, but I am. Because... As much as I know there is so much 
more crap to come in the future and more to deal with. I'm in a really good place. And for anybody who is going through this journey of themselves, I know it sounds so cliche, doesn't it? Whoever's going through this journey of themselves, have faith in you, nothing else. You got to this point, you managed to this point, you might have not done it alone, you might have had support, you, I don't know. But you got to this point, and for the love of God, be proud of yourself. Because so many people haven't. So many people have never made it to this day. So on that positive cheery note. Let me know what you think. Yeah. I'm good. We're all good. Hopefully. But I have got things to do now, my lovely, lovely people. So if you wouldn't mind like subscribing, sharing with friends, if there's anybody you know or even yourself that wants to be on this, please hit me up with a DM on any of my social medias. You will find me there at some point. I have removed social media off my phone now. But I do have a device I can connect with people on. So if you want to find me, that's where I'll be. Um, but until next time, gorgeous people, be proud of you and good day, good breath.